Hey coders and welcome to episode 7 of our form service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be glancing at our next bucket of items known as the grid items. So grid items are actually very similar to the multiple choice questions that or multiple choice items that we examined in the last episode. The only difference is that when you define your set of available answer choices, you can actually use that set across multiple different questions. And what this produces is somewhat of a grid visual layout. So I want you to look at the far left of the screen. We have the generic grid item. Again, you can see that we have defined our answer choices to be either one, two, three, four, or five. However, we are asking multiple questions on those on that same set of answer choices. And again, like I said, this produces somewhat of a 2D effect grid visual layout. All right, and then next we have the checkbox grid item, which is very similar to the checkbox item in that you can select multiple different options within a single question. However, again, it makes it, or this is a grid item because you can define a set of answer choices and have that apply to uh, a different questions or multiple different questions. All right, and then finally on the far right hand side of the screen, we have the scale item, which is almost identical to the multiple choice item. The only difference is that it is now arranged horizontally and displayed horizontally. And furthermore, the different answer choices that you can provide to the respondent has to be a number or has to be a sequence of numbers from 0 to 10 or anywhere uh, any any shorter scale than that as well. So we're going to take a quick look at all of these in the code coming up shortly but first let's look at the methods for today. So I have picked out six of my top methods that I use frequently in my work and they are as insert type here item. And again, when I say insert type here, we've seen this before in other uh, episodes. When I say insert type here, you can put whatever type you'd like to uh, in, in order to typecast a generic item into that specific item. So again, if you wanted to convert a generic item into a scale item, all you would need to say is as scale item. Similarly, with the add insert type here item method, again, if you wanted to have, say, a grid item, all you need to say is add grid item. Okay, and then we have set rows, set columns, set bounds, and finally, set labels. So let's dive into the code and see what these methods can do for us. I don't think you'll have any trouble with these methods. They're very straightforward and simple to use. But first, let's go check out our form just to get a context of what we have so far. Here we go. We have one checkbox grid item on our form currently. And you know it's a checkbox item because you can select multiple options per row, per question. And there we go. All right. So and then also if we go into our form editor, we can verify that it is indeed a checkbox grid item. All right. Let's go into our code editor and start looking at some of these methods. So the first one that we want to look at is let's say that we wanted to get all of the row, all of the titles for the rows on this checkbox grid item. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can go into our code editor. We can say form dot get items like we've seen before. This will return for us an array of items. So we'll just get the zeroth one because we only have one on the screen right now. All right. So let's try to get the row. So if we type in dot get we can see that there is no method for getting the rows. And that is because this returns a generic, this get items, this returns an array of generic items, and not all generic items have rows, right? So we have to now typecast it into a uh, checkbox grid item. And we can see that it's the first uh, method on this, uh, this pop-up right here. So let's just click on that. We can see that it returns a checkbox grid item, which is a little bit more specific than just a generic item. If we hit now the dot button and we say dot get rows, we can see that this indeed is a method that exists and we can use it. It returns for us an array of strings. So let me just console log that just so that we can verify that everything is working sweetly and soundly. I'll hit the run button. And everything ran successfully. Now let's go into our logs right here. And we can have, or we can see that we have the array of Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Exactly what it shows 
right here. So we can see again that we have successfully used the as checkbox grid item method uh, correctly. All right, let me comment this out and move on to our very next method, which is going to be add checkbox grid item. So we can say form, let's get our form again. And again, we can add any type of item that we want to, but just for demonstration, let's add the checkbox grid item. And if we hit save and we hit run, we can see that everything ran successfully. Let's go back into our form and here it is. Again, all we did was add the item. We didn't add any data to it. So it's just a very blank item right now. But we can see that again, it added successfully. It's on the screen. If we reload our, uh, our preview of our form, we can see that again, here it is right here and it's existing. Alrighty, so let's now comment this out and move on to our very next method and I'm actually going to showcase the next two methods together as a group. So the next two methods are set rows and set columns. So we need a grid item for this. It can be a checkbox grid item, but I'm going to just add a generic grid item right here. And again, you can chain these methods together. So I'm going to just drop a line and hit the period button and say set title. I'm going to give it a title first. I'm going to say, where are these landmarks located? Seems like a pretty good title to me. And if we drop a line again, we can now go on to our method set rows. So what this is going to do again is it's going to set basically the title of all of the rows in our grid item. And it takes in an array of strings. So here we go. Conveniently, I have already pre-typed this out. Here is our array of strings right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this variable name, paste it into the uh, parameter position right here, and that is set rows. But now let's look at its sister twin, which is set columns. And this takes in, again, an array of strings. And this is going to be basically setting the title of all of the columns in our grid. All right, so again, I have it up right here. Here's my array already pre-written out. So let me just take this variable name. I'll paste it into the argument position right there. And if I drop a semicolon, hit the save button and run it. And it's running right now, but everything ran successfully. No errors. Let's go into our form. We'll hit the refresh button and voila. There we go right here. Here is our grid item all displayed nice, crisply and cleanly onto our form. So we could say Eiffel Tower, France, Taj Mahal, India, Machu Picchu, Peru, and finally Statue of Liberty in the good old United States. Alrighty, so let's go back into our code. We'll comment this out and we'll take a look at our last two methods, which are set bounds and set labels. So these two methods are attached, or these are methods um, for the scale item class. So first we need to add a scale item. We'll say form the add scale item. And again, we can uh, set a title for this. We can chain these methods together. So I'll say set title. Um, how are you feeling today? I'll drop a line, I'll say dot, and let's look at our first method, which is set bounds. So as you can see, this takes in two parameters. One is the lower bound, one is the upper bound, and they both have to be integers. However, the lower bound has to be either zero or one, and the upper bound could be anywhere from three to 10. That's just how it is set up right now. Uh, so we will follow those rules. So we'll just say uh, one to seven, they can be whatever numbers that you want, as long as they fit within those two constraints. Um, and now we'll drop a line, we'll say dot, and we'll look at finally set labels. So labels, these are basically going to be the labels on the bounds that we just set, right? So it can be a string or it has to be a string. And the first one will be the string or the label for the lower bound. And then the second argument will be a string for the upper bound or a label for the upper bound. So we'll just say, uh, or we'll say terrible. And we'll say after that, terrific. All right, so now if we hit the save button and we run it, you can see that it is running right now. But everything ran successfully because we got no error. So let's go back into our uh, form itself. And we, if we reload the page, there we go. We have an, our new scale item. Again, we can select any one of these numbers and that will rate us on a scale from one to seven how we are feeling today.
All right, guys, again, I know these were very simple methods, so I hope uh, all, all, all the same you learned something and you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.